Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Uh, since we are in the uh, yellow phase, we are allowed to sing. Uh, you've got two things against you, though. You've got, you got masks on your face and you don't have a songbook. But do your best. <laughs> so you might know some of the uh, songs or some of the acclamations. Uh, just do your best in singing them. And someday, real soon, we'll uh, have songbooks, okay? Let's stand. <clears throat> Shepherd me, O oh God. 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 You our hope and shelter. Shepherd me, O oh God. You our guide and pathway. Shepherd me, O oh God. God of mercy, shape us. Shepherd me, O oh God. God of love, inflame us. Shepherd me, O oh God. As you formed and birthed us, as you call and lead us, be our one true future. Shepherd me, O oh God. Shepherd me, O oh God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Preparing to celebrate the mystery of Christ's love, let us come before God as a faithful people. You raised the dead to life in the Spirit. God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Father, through our observance of land, Help us to understand the meaning of your Son's death and resurrection, and teach us to reflect it in our lives. Grant this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever, and Amen. A reading from the second book of Chronicles. 
All the leading priests and the people were exceedingly unfaithful, following all the abominations of the nations. And they polluted the house of the Lord that he had consecrated in Jerusalem. The Lord, the God of their ancestors, persistently sent his messengers to them because he had compassion on his people and on his dwelling place. But they kept mocking the messengers of God, despising his words and scoffing at his prophets until the wrath of the Lord against his people became so great that there was no remedy. Therefore the Lord brought up against them the king of the Chaldeans, who burned the house of God, broke down the wall of Jerusalem, burned all its palaces with fire, and destroyed all its precious vessels. The king took into exile in Babylon those who had escaped from the sword, and they became servants to him and to his sons until the establishment of the kingdom of Persia to fulfill the word of the Lord by the mouth of Jeremiah until the land had made up for all its Sabbaths. All the days that it lay desolate, it kept Sabbath to fulfill 70 years. In the first year of King Cyrus of Persia, in fulfillment of the word of the Lord spoken by Jeremiah, the Lord stirred up the spirit of King Cyrus of Persia so that he sent a herald throughout all his kingdom and also declared in a written edict. Thus says King Cyrus of Persia, the Lord, the God of heaven, has given me all the kingdoms of the earth and he has charged me to build him a house at Jerusalem, which is in Judah. Whoever is among you of all his people, may the Lord his God be with him. Let him go up. The word of the Lord. If I remember you not, 
If I prize not Jerusalem above all my joys, let my tongue be silenced if ever I forget you. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. God, who is rich in mercy, out of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead through our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. For it is by grace you have been saved. And God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that in the ages to come, God might show the immeasurable riches of his grace in kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by grace, you have been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God. This is not the result of works, so that no one may boast. For we are what he has made us, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand to be our way of life. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. you and with your spirit a proclamation from the holy gospel according to john glory to you o lord jesus said to nicodemus just as moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness so must the son of man be lifted up that whoever believes in him may have eternal life for God so loved the world that he, gave, that he gave his only begotten Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. The one who believes in him is not condemned. But the one who does not believe is condemned already for not having believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the judgment, that the light has come into the world, and people love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For all who do evil hate the light and do not come to the light so that their deeds may not be exposed. But those who do what is true come to the light so that it may be clearly seen that their deeds have been done in God. The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The only thing 
and I'll say it again, the only thing that separates you from God is the thought that you are separate from God. It's all in your head. You cannot be separate, separated from God. If you, live, if you live for one nanosecond separate from God, you would cease to exist. When you live in that realization that you are connected to God by a bond that can never be broken, it always feels like surrender. But it's a good kind of surrender. You will feel like the weight of the world has been lifted off your shoulders. We spend a lot of time thinking that with all the big, serious problems going on in the world, how could God care about little old me? But God does. And when you surrender to that, when you allow that, when you enjoy that, when you draw upon that, that is what it means to be saved. One of the worst things we can do as a church when we get into unhealthy theology is to push this thing called salvation into the future and make it a worthiness contest. We're all running the race, trying to be worthy and pure and moral and coming to, to church. And By the way, thank you very much for coming to church and putting all kinds of money in the collection, okay? All of that is okay. It's just okay. okay? But none of that earns you anything. You were in union with God before you were about to come to communion. It's all mercy, it's all grace, and it's all free gift. It might take you the first 40 years of your life to get there, but the real tragedy is when you get to be 80 years old and your life is winding down and you're still not there. In our second reading, Paul's letter to the Ephesians, notice what tense Paul is writing and speaking in. He writes in the past tense, but never the future tense. He says, and I quote, When we were dead through our trespasses, God made us, past tense, God made us alive with Christ. He continues, And God raised us up, past tense again, with Christ and seated us, past tense, with him, Paul continues again, For by grace you have been saved, past tense, eh? you have been saved through faith. If we have been made alive, raised up, and been saved, why do so many of us keep pushing salvation into the future and turning it into a worthiness contest? Your salvation has already been achieved on God's side. It's just we who haven't jumped on the train, surrendered to it, allowed it, or realized it. And as if it wasn't obvious enough, Paul says, By grace you have been saved, past tense, and this is not of your own doing. So stop wasting time with this worthiness contest. This is not of your own doing. It is the gift of God. He wants to show you the immeasurable riches of God's grace. Grace means, by definition, something that is totally free. There is no work you can do to achieve this. It has been prepared for you in advance. The problem is solved from the beginning. And the only difference is between those of us who believe it and those of us who still want to try to earn and engineer our own salvation. Now, if you want to keep thinking how terrible you are, how unworthy you are, and what you've done wrong, you will probably fit in with most of the human race. You are free to think that way, but just know this. It's not the, it's not the gospel. We tend to concentrate on our unworthiness. We've all done it, myself included, many, many times. Before you come to the altar, 
you're all going to publicly say together, Lord, I am not worthy that you should come under my roof. And after we say that, we'll all corporately agree we're not worthy. And then I don't know who started this, but all of a sudden, it becomes a worthiness contest to come up to the altar. We will notice someone in the communion line who is in their second marriage, without an annulment, I might add, and think inwardly, you better not come up. You're not worthy. We'll see somebody who is gay and think, you better not come up. You're not worthy. Or you in the fourth pew who sold me my last car, the lemon. You remember that? You're all looking to see if you're in the fourth pew. I think it would be Leo if I'm counting correctly. <clears throat> okay? You better not come up. You're not worthy. I mean, who would sell the priest a lemon? You who destroyed your life with that addic addiction, the addiction I can tell you're not even trying to overcome. You better not come up. You're not worth it. Okay? That's just a waste of time. That means you are still inside the contest, as if it was up to you to decide who's in and who's out, who God loves and who God doesn't love. As Paul says here in that second reading, we are all saved by mercy and grace. No exceptions. From Pope Francis to me, to you, to the prisoners, to the Protestants, to the atheists, to the drunkards, to whoever we think is unworthy, God has already saved through mercy and grace. So we have to stop making those silly distinctions. Remember, the only thing that separates you from God is the thought that you are separate from God. Period. It's not a moral worthiness contest. Now, with that as background, let us look at one of the most quoted lines in all of the Bible, a line from today's gospel. This line is meant to jump out at you and jump out at me. It goes like this. God did not send his son into the world to condemn it, but that the world might be saved through him. He will be raised up and everyone who looks upon him will have eternal life. Now what does that mean? Picture Jesus raised up on the cross. He is stretching out and holding together the divine and the human. Many of you have seen religious pictures where Jesus is holding up two fingers, right? It's not the peace sign from the 60s. Okay? What, he, what he's saying is, I'm fully human and I'm fully divine. So he's stretching out and he's holding together the human and the divine. It's as if Jesus is saying, look at me. I am the icon. I am the image of what God is doing everywhere all the time. Everywhere. And, and all the time in every human being. There was a time in early church history where we thought Jesus had to be either divine or human. This dualistic thinking, this either-or thinking, gave way eventually to a non-dualistic thinking, to a both-and thinking. Jesus is both fully human and fully divine. It seems like a contradiction. But if you, if you can trust that Jesus is fully human and fully divine, you know what? You can transfer that to yourself and to everybody else that you also are divine and human. That's the leap of faith. That's what is so hard to believe. We are all overwhelmed by our unworthiness, how we think we are not the image of God. It's all about recognizing whose image am I? You are objectively ontologically, theologically, philosophically, metaf metaphysically, forget all those big words. You are already a child of God. So salvation is not a matter of if, it's only a matter of when. When do you get it? And most people put it off to the last hour of life, now and at the hour of my death. Amen. 
And then they have no choice. Then you have to finally surrender to the mystery of God and the mystery of love. But you, you are the lucky people who, be, who can begin to know it now. Why not? The only thing that separates you from God is the thought, the mental thought, I am separate from God. And when you think that way, you tend to live that way too. When you know also that you are the son, the daughter of God, created in the image of Christ, then salvation begins in that very moment. And you don't have to wait to the end of your life. Only people who know they are the beloved sons and daughters of God can pray this way. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. And on the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Trusting in the Father's great love for us and confident that he will hear us and answer us, we turn to him with our prayers. For the church, calling us to live out our gospel values, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For leaders of all nations to be sources of grace and inspiration to the people they serve, and to be more attentive to the needy. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those preparing to receive the sacraments, and for those who walk alongside them as catechists, sponsors, and godparents, to be open to God's grace and love. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are suffering because of violence, war, hunger, and injustice. For an end to darkness and sadness in their lives. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the light of Christ to shine in our lives and transform us from within. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, including Bill Morano, Sheila Greening, Albert McEachern, Francis Hould, Angel Northup, Elizabeth Violette, Ainsley Mongraw, Bill Stafford, Kevin McKinley. And for those who have died, including Rita Murphy Pomerlo, Clarence Lapointe, Dick LeBlanc, brother of Marie Betts, we pray. Lord, 
hear our prayer. Gracious God, your word, Jesus Christ, spoke peace to a sinful world, world and brought humanity the gift of reconciliation. Hear and answer our prayers that we bring to you in faith. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God. And blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise of God's name and our good of all God's holy church. We place before you with joy these offerings which bring eternal remedy, O Lord, praying that we may both faithfully revere them and present them to you as is fitting for the, salvation, for the salvation of all the world. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord. Almighty and eternal God, for you, for you have given your children a sacred time for the renewing and purifying of their hearts, that, freed from disordered affections, they may, they may so deal with the things of this passing world as to hold rather to the things that eternally endure. And so with all the angels and saints we praise you as without end we acclaim. Holy from the world's be beginning are ceaselessly at work so that the human race may become holy just as you yourself are holy. Look upon your people's offerings 
and pour out on them the power of your spirit that they may become the body and blood of your beloved son Jesus Christ in whom we too are your sons and daughters indeed though we once were lost and could not approach you you loved us with the greatest love for your son who alone is just handed himself over to death and did not disdain to be nailed for our sake to the wood of the cross but before his arms were outstretched between heaven and earth to become the lasting sign of your co covenant he desired to celebrate the Passover with his disciples as he ate with them he took bread and giving you thanks he said the blessing broke the bread and gave it to them saying take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, knowing that he was about to reconcile all things in himself through his blood to be shed on the cross, he took the cup, filled with the fruit of the vine, and once more giving you thanks, handed the cup to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mystery of Faith. celebrate the memorial of your son Jesus Christ who is our Passover and our surest peace we celebrate his death and resurrection from the dead and looking forward to his blessed coming we offer you who are our faithful and merciful God this, sacri this, this sacrificial one who reconciles to you the human race look kindly most compassionate God on those you unite to yourself by the sacrifice of your Son, and grant that, by the power of the Holy Spirit, as they partake of this one bread and one cup, they may be gathered into one body in Christ who heals every division. Be pleased to keep us always in commun communion of mind and heart, together with Valerie, our Bishop, and Francis, our Pope. Help us to work together for the coming of your kingdom until the hour when we stand before you, saints among the saints in the halls of heaven, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Blessed Apostles and all the saints, and with our deceased brothers and sisters whom we humbly surrender to your mercy. Then, freed at last from the wound of corruption and made fully into a new creation, we shall sing to you with gladness the thanksgiving of Christ who lives for all eternity. Through him, with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. voice we pray in the words Jesus gave us our Father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. 
Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. And may the peace of the Lord be always with you. is the Lord, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are we who are invited to share in his supper. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. The body of Christ.
Let us pray. O God, who enlightens everyone who, who comes into this world, illuminate our hearts with the splendor of your grace, that we may always ponder what is worthy and pleasing to your majesty and love you in all sincerity through Christ our Lord. Please bow your heads. Look upon those who call to you, O Lord, and sustain the weak. Give life by your unfailing light to those who walk in the shadow of death and bring those rescued by your mercy from every evil to reach the highest good through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. 
May Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our celebration is ended. We go in peace. Thanks be to God.